The Boy at the Back of the Class, Chapter 1, The Empty Chair There used to be an empty chair at the back of my classroom. It wasn't a special chair, it was just empty because there was no one sitting in it. But then, one day, just three weeks after school started, the most exciting thing that could ever happen to anyone happened to me and my three best friends. And it all began with that chair. Usually, the best thing about starting a brand new term is that you get extra pocket money to buy a new stationery with. Every year, on the last Sunday of the summer holidays, my mum takes me to an extra special adventure down, uh, to hunt down my stationery set for the new school year. Sometimes, I get so excited that my feet feel jumpy inside and I don't know which shop I want to go into first. There aren't many nice stationery shops where I live. They only ever have boring dinosaur sets for boys or princess sets for girls. So mum takes me on the bus and train into the city where there are whole streets of shops, even huge department stores that look like tall blocks of flats from the outside. Last year, I found a space themed set with pictures of an astronaut floating past the moon. It was on sale too, so I bought a pencil case, a math set, rubbers and a long ruler and still had nearly a pound left over. The ruler is one of my favourite stationary pieces because the astronaut floats across it in, in water mixed with silver stars. I played with it so much that the astronaut got stuck on one side and I couldn't be bothered, and couldn't be bothered to move again. But it wasn't my fault. Mr Thompson, our teacher last year, had such a boring voice that my hands needed something to do. That's why it's important to have fun stationary with you in class because you never know when you'll need to stop your brain from falling asleep or doing something that might get you into detention. This year I bought a Tintin and Snowy set. I love Tintin, even though he's only a character in a comic book and isn't real. I want to be just like him when I grow up. I think being a reporter and getting to solve mysteries and go on adventures must be the best job in the world. My mum and dad used to buy me a brand new Tintin comic book for my birthdays and mum saves all the comics her library are about to throw away because they're too old or ripped and gives them to me. So I have a whole collection of them now. I've read them all at least 50 times. But I have to think of another pet to travel with because I'm allergic to dogs. I don't think cats or hamsters or even trained mice could be half as useful as Tintin's dog Snowy. And even though I thought about it for at least a year now, I still haven't come up with anything. Because the Tintin stationery set was a lot more expensive than the astronaut one and wasn't on sale, I could only buy a pencil case, a small ruler and two rubbers. I had to think about it for a long time. But in the end, I decided spending all my pocket money in one go was worth it. Not just because everything had Tintin on it, but because if you press a button on the pencil case, Snowy barks and Captain Haddock's voice cries out, Mr. and Barnacles! I've already been told off for pressing it in the middle of maths class this year, but if you can't press a barking dog button in maths, then I don't see the point of it. I don't like maths. Simple maths is fine, but this year, we're learning about long division and square numbers and all sorts of things that my brain doesn't like doing. Sometimes I ask for help, but it's embarrassing putting your hand up too many times to ask the same question. I'm lucky because Tom and Josie and Michael always help me with the things I get stuck with. They're my best friends and we do everything together. Tom's got short spiky hair and a side smile and a big Adam's apple that looks like a ping pong ball got stuck in his throat. He's the smallest in our group, but he's also the funniest. He only joined our class last year after his parents moved here from America, but we became friends instantly. He has three older brothers who all tease and bully him, not seriously, only for a joke. But I think they steal his food too, which is why he's so skinny and always super hungry. I once saw him eat a whole pizza with extra toppings and a double cheeseburger for lunch and still not be full up. So I hide my snacks and chocolate bars from him when I can. Josie has large brown eyes and at least a million freckles across her face. She's tall and gangly and is always chewing on her hair. She's the fastest girl in our year and can kick a football past any goalie from the other side of the pitch. She's the coolest person I know. And I've known her since we were three. Our mums say we became instant friends the first day we started nursery. So they decided to become friends too. I don't really remember much about myself at that age, but Josie is in all of my school memories. We even got our first attention together last year, all because of a hamster called Herbert. Josie had one of the upper school bullies say that he was going to flush our class hamster, Herbert, down the toilet at home time. 
Josie told me and we decided to go on a hamster rescue mission. We hid Herbert in my rucksack before home time and took him straight to my house. But of course, mum found out and made me take him back the very next day. I tried to explain to boring Mr. Thompson what had happened, but he wouldn't listen and gave me a detention. And even though she didn't have to, Josie stood up and said she helped to steal Herbert too, just so we could do detention together. You know a friend's a best friend when they're willing to sit in detention with you. Michael has the neatest, puffiest afro out of all the boys in our year. Most people think he's weird, but not us. His glasses are always broken and his shoelaces are never done right, so he's always tripping up or bumping into things when he walks. But we're all so used to it now that we never notice. But we're all, uh, he's mostly quiet, but when he does say something, grown-ups usually look impressed and say that it's ingenious or insightful or use other strange words beginning with in. I don't know what they mean, but I guess they mean he's clever. Grown-ups always like coming up with long words for simple things. It's true. Michael gets made fun of a lot because he can't run fast or kick a ball in a straight line, but he doesn't care. I wouldn't care either if I was as rich as him. His dad is a professor and his mum is a lawyer, and because they're always busy, they buy him all the latest gadgets and books and the coolest new games. When we went to his house last year for his birthday party, he saw his room for the first time. It looked like the inside of a toy store. I think it must be easier not to care about what people think when you've got that many toys in your life. Josie and Michael are always competing with each other to see who can get the most gold stars and A's in class. Michael is the best at history and Josie is the best at maths, but I'm better at reading and spelling than both of them, especially Josie. She hates reading and never ever reads anything outside of class. She says she doesn't have an imagination, so there's no point in reading books. I find that strange because how can anyone not have an imagination? I think she must have had one when she was younger but it was knocked out of her when she fell off her bike last summer. Mum says people without imaginations are dead inside. I don't think Josie is dead anywhere. She talks too much. Having three best friends can make school seem like the best place to be, even on the most boring day. Although this year, school has become a whole lot more fun, and that's because of our new teacher, Mrs Khan. Mrs Khan has extra bouncy hair and always smells of strawberry jam, which is much better than smelling of old socks like Mr. Thompson used to do. She's new to the school and extra clever, much cleverer than Mr. Thompson ever was. And she give us prizes on Fridays when we've all been good. No other teacher in our year does that. Mrs. Khan lets us do all sorts of interesting things that we have never done before. In the first week of school, she helped us make musical instruments out of things we found in the school's recycling bin. And in the second week, she bought in a brand new comic book to read to us that wasn't even in the school library yet. Then in the third week, something happened that was so surprising and made everyone so curious that even Mrs. Khan couldn't make us focus on our lessons properly. And it all began with the empty chair. It was on the third Tuesday after school had started and Mrs. Khan was taking the register. She was just about to call my name when there was a loud knock at the door. Usually when there's a knock on the door, it's just someone from another class bringing a note. So no one really pays any attention. But this time, it was Mrs. Sanders, the head. Mrs. Sanders always wears her hair in the exact same way and peers over her glasses whenever she talks to anyone. Everyone is scared of her because when she gives detention, she doesn't just make you sit in a room, she makes you memorize long words from the dictionary and doesn't let you leave until you've learned them all off by heart. The meaning and the spelling. I've even heard of lower graders being stuck in detention for hours because they had to learn words that were as long as this page. So when we saw that it was Mrs. Sanders at the door, we all fell silent. She looked very serious as she walked up to Mrs. Khan and we all wondered who was in trouble. After she had whispered and nodded for a few seconds, she suddenly turned around and, peering over her glasses at us, pointed to the empty chair at the back of the class. All of us turned around to have a look at the empty chair this was the chair. Now there's a picture of a chair here, but you can't see it. As I said, it was a pretty ordinary chair and it was empty because a girl called Denna left our class at the end of last year to move to Wales. No one really missed her except for her best friend Clarissa. Denna had been a bit of a show off and was always talking about how, her, how many presents her parents got her every week and how many pairs of trainers she had and all sorts of other things that no one else cared about. 
She liked to sit at the back of the class because then she and Clarissa could pretend to be doing lessons when they were really drawing pictures of their favourite pop stars and giggling about someone they didn't like. Someone else could have taken the seat, but no one really wanted to sit next to Clarissa. That's why the chair had stayed empty. After whispering for a few more seconds with Mrs Khan, Mrs Sanders left the classroom. We expected Mrs Khan to say something, but she seemed to be waiting, so we waited too. It was all very serious and exciting. But before we could start guessing about what was going on, Mrs Sanders came back, and this time she wasn't alone. Standing behind her was a boy, a boy none of us had ever seen before. He had short dark hair and large eyes that hardly blinked and smooth pale skin. Everyone, said Mrs Khan as the boy went and stood next to her, this is Ahmet and he'll be joining our class from today. He just moved to London and is new to the school, so I hope you all do your very best to make him feel welcome. We all watched in silence as Mrs Sanders led him to the empty chair. I felt sorry for him because I knew he wouldn't like sitting next to Clarissa very much. She still missed Denner and everyone knew she hated boys. She says they're stupid and smell. I think it must be one of the worst things in the world to be new to a place and have to sit with people you don't know, especially people that stare and scowl at you like Clarissa was doing. I made a secret promise myself right there and then that I would be friends with the new boy. I happened to have some lemon sherbets in my bag that morning and I thought I would try and give him one at break time and I would ask Josie and Tom and Michael if they would be his friends too. After all, having four new friends would be much better than having none, especially for a boy who looked as scared and as sad as the one now sitting in the back of our class. And that's the end of the first chapter. We'll finish reading that when we all come to school in September. See you then.